sonatas bearing titles from Beethoven himself. The Opus 13, titled Pathetic, and the Opus 81A, so-called Les Adieu. Other titles of his sonatas, such as Moonlight, Tempest, Appassionata, or Pastoral, were not from Beethoven. Beethoven wrote this sonata in 1809, before the departure of his most important patron and good friend, Archduke Rudolf. No one else received Beethoven's compositions as many as Archduke Rudolf did. Besides the sonata, Beethoven dedicated some other major works to Archduke Rudolf. The famous Hammerklavier sonata, the Archduke Trio, both his piano concerti, the fourth and the fifth, Misa Solemnis, and few more. Archduke Rudolf must have held a special place in Beethoven's heart and mind. That year, 1809, Archduke Rudolf must leave Vienna due to the advancing army of Napoleon. That occasion made this sonata to have a very strong programmatic content. Programmatic music, like this sonata, means that the music is written to express a specific event or emotion. In this sonata, the first movement is portraying the farewell, the second movement the absence, and the third movement the return. Besides programmatic in its nature, the sonata also strongly shows a cyclic construction. It means the motif that appears in one movement may appear in other movements. Beethoven was so fond of these cyclic constructions. It makes efficient use of materials and at the same time built a strong structural coherence. Beethoven was the first composer who used this cyclic idea consistently in his multi-movement compositions. Here is the scheme of this sonata. A slow introduction opens its first movement. The second movement is relatively short, almost like an intermezzo, and linked together to the third movement. Such scheme does make a nice pairing, as you can see here on my board. I made them in colors, two pairs of slow, fast, green-blue sections. It will be easier if I organize my lecture into two parts, the discussion of the slow portion and another discussion of the fast portion. Let us see how Beethoven's cyclic idea connects the slow portion of this sonata, and what kind of insights and inspirations we may find from this slow portion. First, the two sections of this slow portions are in 2-4. Both show a march rhythm. The dotted rhythm. Such rhythm is often associated with a funeral march. Surely Beethoven was hoping to have his very best friend returning home safely. But I believe the fear of losing a person so close to him was apparent. That fear is clearly expressed in the slow portion of this sonata. That fear becomes the cyclic idea that dominates both slow sections. The introduction of the first movement that tells about the unexpected farewell and throughout the second movement that tells about the absence of his good friend. Let's see further to its rhythmic construction. The phrasings are based on the same rhythmic figurations. This starts on the fourth quaver and on the third quaver. Pay attention how Beethoven wrote rest on stronger beats. How much this rest heightened the sense of missing a person. The motif for the slow portion is tightly connected. Beethoven limited the cyclic motif here only to three notes. 
see that they start on the exact same note. The first one goes straight down, suggesting the definite verdict that a friend must go, no other choice. And Beethoven even placed the word Leibovol to those three notes. The second one, the last note, turns upward, creating a sense of an open-ended question. What a tormenting uncertainty. By comparing the two sections of the slow portion, not only do I find this connection, but also how the story develops in this programmatic music. The two sections are built on the same material, showing a strong reference to one subject matter, but the different turns they have show the unfolding drama within. Lastly, you may sense the C minor atmosphere in both sections, but it never is clearly established. Have you ever wondered what kind of emotion is expressed here with this trait? For me, it evokes the air of silent anxiety of uncertain situations that the composer was facing. In the introduction, the key scheme is in two folds. First, it opens in the fleeting E flat major into C minor key. Second, it modulates to B major, a third related key from the E flat major. My interpretation of this special moment is that Beethoven here was sending good wishes to his departing friend, even though very soon his fear sneaked back in. The key scheme for the second movement is in three folds. First is in the C diminished seventh. Then to F diminished seventh. And finally to B flat diminished seventh. The harmony beneath is rising at a perfect fourth higher. Does this portray the rising anxiety, escalating, trembling fear? Why does it matter to be aware of these details inside these slow sections? First, these analytical interpretations create a comprehensive view inside the mind of a performer, resulting in a more solid playing of this strongly coherent structure. Then, it opens up more artistic possibilities, imaginations, and at the end, more profound meaning and deeper, tighter attachment to this piece. <laughs>